So this one's about the federal court system, 4.3. And uh, the federal court system deals with things at the federal level. So the pictures you see on the screen are all examples of things that have happened at the federal level, not the state level, but the federal level. Sometimes uh, they've lead to the Supreme Court coming out of states, but we'll talk about that in just a moment. But these are all the pictures that you'll see on the screen. And I want to go to a word now that I think will help us here. And that's a key word you got to have for this whole unit, which is jurisdiction, the official power to make decisions and judgments. In federal court, they hear cases involving federal law. When you listen to 4.2 on state courts and local courts, they have jurisdiction or the power to make judgments over state laws or local laws, right? You do not get to mix and match necessarily. There's only a few courts that get to have jurisdiction over everything, right? So if you think back to jurisdiction that federal cases here, they get to hear cases involving federal law. Well, what are examples of those? Those are challenges about like the constitutionality of things, uh, whether or not people's rights have been violated. Um, you know, if you think back to like Brown versus Board of Education or Roe v. Wade, uh, or this was the um, Supreme Court's decision allowing gay marriage nationwide. Um, those are things that deal with the Constitution, which is federal law, right? So that's why the Supreme Court in this case, which is the group down here, uh, gets to make those decisions. You also may be detained because of federal crimes, uh, such as tax evasion or bankruptcy, or drug trafficking. Uh, so that's where, you know, this is the person that bombed the Boston Marathon. This is El Chapo, who ran the Sinaloa cartel. Um, this is Timothy McVeigh, who blew up a federal building in Oklahoma City. Al Capone, who ran a drug cartel during the Prohibition era. They are all guilty of federal crimes. And so they found themselves in federal court. So that's kind of how this works on the jurisdiction level. Most cases at the federal level don't deal with something that dramatic. Um, this is the federal court building that we have locally. Um, there are three um, federal courts in our district. We have one of them in Richland off of Jadwin. Uh, I will show you, we live in the Eastern Washington district. Uh, and so there's a Richland court, there is a Yakima court, and there is a Spokane court. And this is the webpage for that um, district that we live in. I'll show you more of that in just a moment. Um, the way you should think about this is the court system is very much set up like everything else is related to federalism. So the Supreme Court is the highest court. That's going to be our next lesson, the highest federal court. They can hear cases that uh, deal with anything, state cases, federal cases, anything that gets appealed high enough that they agree to accept, they can because the Constitution is the supreme law of the land, right? But in federal court, uh, cases involving federal laws end up at U.S. District Court. That's the lowest level. You could then appeal the decision to the appeals court. Some things have special appeals courts like bankruptcy cases. Um, and then the Supreme Court is the highest level of the appeals court. So if somebody makes a decision down in district court, let's say that somebody's guilty of something. If it goes to the Court of Appeals and they're guilty as well, it could go to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court actually could still rule that person as not guilty or that it wasn't constitutional or whatever the case is about. Um there's also cases that involve like foreign diplomats from other countries um, or two states are suing each other over water rights or power rights or whatever the case may be. So Washington's going against Oregon over something that's going to go to federal court. D disputes between states, bankruptcy cases and a violation of federal crimes would all end up at federal court. You can imagine that there's a lot that needs to be handled at the federal court level because it's a big country. And so basically the way that this is divided is that there's circuits. And there's 12 regional circuits. We live in the ninth one. And so there's, and you can kind of see here in Washington how there's like a line right here. So within states that have more population, there may be one or more districts. So I told you we live in the Eastern Washington district. Well, that's this district within the ninth circuit, right? Idaho and Montana, because their population's lower, only have one district, right? So there's districts inside of circuits. And the district court that you would go to is most likely the district court, um, you know, in your district. So if there's a federal violation of something or there needs to be a dispute handled, it's going to either go to Yakima, Richland, or Spokane. If you're in Idaho, it's going to go to probably Boise. Um, Nevada is going to go to, I don't actually know where Nevada's one is out. I guess Las Vegas, I don't know that. And then in California, it depends on where you're at, right? So that's kind of how federal cases get handled kind of locally, but there's still federal court cases. So... In a nutshell, this is the structure of the federal government. This next lesson we'll talk about is the Supreme Court, which is the highest level of the federal court. And so if something happens at this district, 
it gets appealed to the district court of appeals. So every circuit has one court of appeals or more, but ours is in San Francisco. Uh, we also have appeals courts in Seattle and Portland. Uh, then it can make its way eventually, if it needs to, to the Supreme Court. So that'll be the, the focus of our next lesson. But I think you now have just a general sense on the types of cases the federal courts would hear and how courts are organized.